Okay guys, so recently I hauled a bunch of different things, uh, including this Vicky Button watercolor set and her uh, art crayons. And then I also picked up recently this um, metallic watercolor set by Premio at Tuesday morning. Actually all this stuff came from Tuesday morning. And then I have these Recollections watercolor crayons. I might have some other watercolor stuff, but I'm just going to stick to these four things today because they're kind of similar, but not really. I guess not really. Just the <laughs> art crayons and the watercolor crayons, even though those are pretty different themselves. But I'm going to start off by maybe messing around a little bit with the regular watercolors, then we'll go into the watercolor tubes, and then we'll go into the crayons and whatnot. So for now, um, <clears throat> my neighbor's having uh, solar panels put in, so you might hear some, I hear it's loud. But anyway, um, so I have two little jars of water, because whatever you work with watercolors, you do want to have like a clean water and your dirty water, but either way, I might have to dip my fingers in these, so I have two little jars, and these are just the little wee jars from uh, Yo Play, I think it's Yo Play yogurt, and these are the mini ones, so they have larger ones, and I keep these guys because you never know what you can use them for. I even put them outside. I have some with some wire um, around the top, and then like a little loop, and I put bird seed in them, and because they're super sturdy, like nothing happens. I, I even just let them sit out on my fence, just like that, and it's just fine because they're heavy and the birds don't knock them over, so. Just some recycling ideas. I don't know if I'm going to need these brushes, <clears throat> but I'm going to bring them out just in case. They're just cheap brushes. And let me open this guy up. So we'll start off with this one. Hopefully Amanda will stay asleep for a little bit so I can kind of get to some of this. And I have some Bristol paper. I don't know what happened to my watercolor paper. I know I have a watercolor pad with those huge aquarelle pads, but... I could not find it and I didn't want to spend any more time looking for it. So you just really want to use some really heavy paper or watercolor paper, of course, would be better. Sorry guys, I didn't know this thing was going to be such a pain to open. <laughs> okay. And... Oh my goodness. <clears throat> so this is just Bristol, I think 300 series. It's like a 100 pound paper, so it's thick. It's not anything special. I just stamped with some uh, Spectrum Noir Finesse, which is... Oh, you know what? That's alcohol proof. I don't think it's waterproof. Let me restamp this. I'm going to stamp it on the back side because if I put some water on that, it's just going to get really bad. So let me restamp this guy with um, ink that is waterproof. Okay, guys, sorry about that. And of course, I go to look and I can't find my Versafine or my Memento Black. And I have like three of Memento Blacks, but they're all closed up. And I know I have an open one, so I'm not going to open a new one. So I used Rich Cocoa. Memento and if you guys are confused with that kind of thing like This finesse says alcohol proof dye, which is nice because it says it right in the front Usually you have to read the back and see what it says that it'll be good for so this is finesse. I believe um, I forgot the line the name of spectrum noir. That's water resistant, but memento Fast resistant dye ink fade resistant. Sorry, and if you read on the back It says it's waterproof when dry the other good one is versifying and Versafine I knew, like I was just looking for it, but I can't find my Versafine. I don't want to open this because I know I have an open one. This stuff lasts forever too. It's like a oil, I don't know if it's oil based or what, but anyway, but this is normally what I would use. I would use Versafine because I trust it. I know it doesn't smear at all, but um, I didn't want to open it. So I just want to show that to you guys. So what I'm going to do is just go in and start coloring this little dude with this metallic paint. Sorry about that hiatus there. I had to go find this stuff. Okay, is this going to open for me? Alrighty, <laughs> there it goes. So that was weird. I was like forcing it and then all of a sudden it just opened really easy. So, of course, you always blend colors on these sides. That's just kind of how watercolor um, cases are set up. I'm going to put this off to the side so you might not be able to see it. I was going to paint him green, but I thought, you know, it might be cuter to make him like blue colors. I don't know. So I'm going to look for a light blue color. Like, I don't know we know what these look like. So I'm just going to dip and we're going to start using them. So again, I have my clean and my two waters when they're both clean now, but one will get dirty enough soon enough. And I'm just going to clean up my brush so that it's more malleable. Okay. All right. So with watercolors, you can always just wet your paper. This is not watercolor paper. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put the least amount of water that I can, but um, you can start off wet on wet. You can do dry, you know, obviously if it's dry paper and obviously if you have your wet watercolor, it'll be much brighter. I just kind of want to see maybe a little bit of what these colors even look like. Oh, that's so pretty. 
Okay, so let's... I'm just going to go in for this. I don't know how metallic this will be at the end. And my little daughter, she always does this. She leaves her brush really dry, and then she's like, there's no color. I'm like, okay, you got to wet it a little more. So, you know, just try these out. These are pretty dry paints. Um, I was going to make him blue the whole thing, but that's kind of... Let's just do a little more here, and then maybe I'll put his belly a different color, and I'll try to wick away that blue that I already put down on his belly. The brush is okay. It doesn't give you that much control. It's a little bit wonky there. Just trying to see where else I need to make him blue. And I'm going to try to push away that blue that I brought into his belly here. And that's my dirty water. Get some clean water on here. And maybe I'll go into this yellow for his tummy. And you can always wait in between layers for that blue to finish drying. I'm just kind of messing with this. And it is very metallic. I will give it that. And a little water here. And I'm just dipping into some orange. Just to give him a little shadow, but I don't even know if it needs that. So I'm dipping dirty water, clean water, and go back over here with the clean. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Oopsie, of course I dipped into the <laughs> clean water with that. But that's okay, it was yellow. Um, and let's get some darker blue. I don't know if this one's too dark. We'll see. This brush is not the best. It's already losing hairs here. All right. I'm getting a little bit darker blue to kind of go in here. I probably should have gotten a brush from that kit. That's a little finer. And again, I'm laying this down a little bit more opaque, like less water, more paint. I don't even know where this should end, to be honest. I'm not the best at this. I'm just trying to give you a little variation in color. And let's get a little more of that blue. Watercolor is really fun because you kind of just leave it and it just goes like, ooh, does what it needs to do. Let me get a little of that dark blue in here. Okay, this is obviously not the best. I'm not the best at this, but there you go. <clears throat> Pretty good. I'm going to kind of finish them up off camera because I don't want to waste your guys' time, but it is metallic. I'll come back when it's dry so you can kind of see the metallic um, nature of it. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love him. He is all metallic now. I will say this. Um, you do have to be careful because if it cakes up, it's hard to see the detail anymore. I guess you can come in with a fine liner afterwards, like on his wings. It kind of like, um, kind of disappeared those lines a little bit. Um, so it is really nice. It's opaque. I mean, as far as a watercolor is concerned, look at that. And then I use for his little horns. I don't know if you can see his horns are shimmery too. I use this one here. It's kind of a pearly color. And I just thought, oh, I'll just throw that on there. And then for his wings, I use that darker gray in the back. But that's really cute, super metallic. So you do have to be careful with like stay within the lines. And for me, I was like, I'll just color over the whole thing, right? Because that's what you would normally do, kind of. But it was not the best. As far as blending, I don't know. I, mean, I need I need to work on that. That's that's me, not the colors. But um, hey, it's pretty good. All right, let's move on to the regular like watercolor tubes. Oops. Okay. Sorry about that noise. So this is the Vicky Button. Watercolors, they were five bucks at um, Tuesday morning. And I'm assuming they're in a resealable box. Like, oh, I probably cut into it real ugly there, but that's okay. Well, maybe not. I thought this would open up this way, but it opens this way. Oh, these are so cute. Look how fancy. That's really cute. Again, and I probably should have. Uh, okay, this is what I'll do. I should have kept out like the little, and of course I have tons of those little like mixing trays 
Where are they right now? I don't know. Um, I need to grab something for that, but okay. So I am gonna use these brushes because obviously these don't come with brushes and well, I have two round ones here. I have a one and a five. That sounds good. Um, again, if you want to use the wash of color, you can use like this big guy. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll use all these. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. And then um, I had picked this stuff at Daiso because I knew I had those art crayons. And for the art crayons, what she does is she puts it like on a piece of plastic basically and then constitute them with water and then she pours it onto the paper. So this is a drip mat I saw at Daiso, which is, obviously you can't see it, it's just clear. Um, it's basically in their area where they have like for like Chinese brush lettering and stuff like that. So you can put this under your paper so if it needs to soak through whenever you don't ruin your surface. So I'm going to have this and I'm going to use it for this even though that's not quite why you would use it, but I'm going to put that down. I have my little image here and um, you know we'll just pick something. Um, as far as a wash, let me see, maybe we'll use like this, I don't know if it's blue, it looks like a darker blue. And I'm gonna put it down right here. Oh, gotta pop it open. These are like those little balloony things. Remember those things when you were a kid you used to get that was really toxic and make you a little bit high and then you'd <laughs> put on a little straw and you'd blow it. Those things were so much fun. And since I'm cheap, the way I am, I'm going to scrape out whatever's in there and use that. So, I'm gonna get this big brush. Why are these brushes stuck down so well? Is it just me getting old? I'm really impatient with packaging nowadays. Okay, so I'm gonna actually put this in my clean water real quick to kind of get that brush a little softer. And I'm going to pick up the color that's there. Ooh, that really started kind of doing its own thing when, as soon as it hit water. Wow. Okay, so if I'm going to use that, and this is already kind of a lot on here, I'm going to just kind of brush it off and add a little water. Add a little more water in here, and I'm going to start using that. So, yes, they are watercolors. <laughs> I didn't think they were not going to work very well, so really pretty. So, I mean, you can get a nice wash with that if you need to. Obviously, I can keep going and kind of mess a little bit. I wasn't really trying to do that. I was just more than anything going to mess with my little image down here. I do want to soften that line, though. I am not the best. And this is very small <laughs> for a wash. That's not even looking that great. Maybe it's better just to go side to side for now. Okay. Let me clean this out. And I'm going to try to paint our little dude. It might not be easy for me because these are actual watercolors. So let me wet this here really well. Put this off to the side. And let's get some green paint. Again, open it up, pop it here. Obviously you can use these like watercolors, like any watercolors. I'm not the best at watercoloring at all. I'm not even close. <laughs> ah, this thing is exploding. Oh, that's too bad. Okay, well, I'm gonna put the lid back on that. It just shot out, which is not my favorite. I'm gonna put that over there. So that's kind of a bummer. Like half the tube came out. All right. Um, oh, it's a lot darker than I thought. So I'm gonna try to water this down quite a bit. And I'm gonna make this little dude green. Okay, so it's a lot lighter even at that. Okay, so just like any watercolor, I'm assuming you build up your color because it is very faint. Um, it's drying faster than those metallic ones, I'll tell you that. Let me get a little less water on this. Try to make it a little thicker. And we'll go with that and see what that looks like. Ooh, okay, so that's a lot more pigment. <laughs> These brushes are pretty good, I'm not gonna lie about that. Okay, let's see here. 
Like this, I'm just trying to put some color a little deeper in the shadow areas. What a bummer that so much came out. And I need to go back in and shade this a little better. <laughs> or mix it in a little better. I don't want too wet though. And like I said, I'm not any kind of fancy watercolor, but when you're pulling out your color, you do want to pull it out from the darker area to the lighter, right? However you think you should do it. And I'm going to go in here and just touch that up. Okay. Pretty good. I mean, these are pretty nice. I would say they're just like any other watercolor that might come out of a tube. You have to know a little bit more about what you're doing. I don't, know, I don't know if this back here is his wing. I thought it was earlier, so I painted it green. So I'll paint it green this time, too. Just down in here. And you can get a lot of variation in color just from the one color. So that's pretty cool. So I'll continue. I'll finish coloring in his little belly and his little wings. And, um, and then we will move on to the next thing. Okay, so super cute. Too bad, you know. That one kind of exploded. I did use the black just very lightly to kind of do some shading in the little wings. And there is a white tube, so you can always do that. I mean, I can color in the horns, but I decided not to. There's a little bit of sparkle in there because of the water I was using, but not bad. And like I said, they dry kind of quickly. So it's kind of nice to layer up as you're going. Um, you know, I don't know, pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna put this to the side for right now. I'm gonna clean up because I need to clean this thing off and then I will, um, oh, I didn't put the lid back on this. Um, we will try out the, uh, art crayons. Okay, so I have some new fresh water, some paper towels. So like I said, with the art crayons, they're kind of weird because, um, every video I've watched of Vicky Buttons, she's like, five ways to use them and it's like the same thing. So it's kind of weird because you don't apply them right to your paper. Um, I have that piece of plastic down here still, the acetate, super thick. Um, and so I'm just going to pick some colors. I don't know what else to do. Uh, la, la, la. I don't know if I'm going to put them on that same. Eh, whatever. Okay, so let's just, I, I don't know what I want to do, guys. It shouldn't be this, uh, I wanted to include that little, um, Dragon somehow, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to. So let's just open this up. So she has three sets of colors. I have two of them because those are the two that they had a Tuesday morning. But um, the packaging is really cute. Uh, let's see. I like colors like this, and I like maybe this orangey yellow. I'll just mix those two colors. <clears throat> you can do one color at a time. Um, she says to take a baby wipe and clean off this little kind of white powder that's on here, but I mean, what's the point? I'll just wipe them on this towel. A lot of color came off doing that. And basically these are creamy. She says never to take them right to your paper because it's just not the look that she, you know, I guess that she envisions for her products. <laughs> it's Cause I don't know how else to say that. So if you were to just go right on here, it's just, it's gonna be really harsh. I'll just show you on this one side, right? I mean, I just did it really lightly and then you can kind of still blend it with your finger, but you see how it still stays the kind of the rough edges. And if I was to wet that, um, it just kind of stays there. So that's kind of why for her, it's not like a gelato or maybe other art crayons, like, um, distress crayons. What she says to do is really just scribble it on something like this. And she says, and try to keep it contained because if not, if you're like all over the place, you're going to try to collect all that color. And that's not what she's going for either. I'm going to use two colors. Why not? I'm just going to put this over here and We'll see what happens because basically what you're going to do is then just you can add a lot of water you can put the water in like this i'm just kind of adding it in and just constituting it so that's why i'm saying like maybe you don't have to mix them because it might not mix anyway the way you're imagining <laughs> it might any more water to mix this in and for her you're trying to get enough water on here that you can um, then pour it, which is kind of weird, <laughs> I'll admit. Or you can take your paper and rub it in here, which is probably what I would rather do, but she just puts so much water that if you go like this, it's going to start pouring. That's what she does. 
So, you know, I will guess I'll try and do that. I don't even know if I have enough water even at that, but let's see. Let's see what happens. Nope, not enough. Not really enough. Not nearly enough. Let's just take this and rub it on here. <laughs> How about that? So, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I actually need a bigger brush. That brush I'm using is really small. But see? So now it's just more artsy, a little more um, ethereal. I'm going to wipe this clean again. I'm going to do it again, but with a bigger area so I can... So I probably need a bigger brush, like I said, like a wash brush. So let me get a bunch of this stuff. I'm doing a lot more. Oh, it broke, but guess what? You can still use that little nib, just kind of rub it in. Oh, I broke that one too, because she says to be soft with, like gentle with it, and apparently I was going a little ham on that. Okay, let me get... Okay, that's a little more water. A little more concentrated. I'm just kind of trying to splash the water on here like a lot. <laughs> and of course I'm trying to get my clean water which now is contaminated with pink and yellow. But I'm trying to do that again. Yeah, so she says you, know, you have to get enough on here that you can just like pour with it which is interesting. <laughs> I just don't know that, that that's possible for me at this point. But I'm going to put a little more water. I'm trying to push it down this way. I think I already messed this up because the way I <laughs> did it the first time. I'm still going to try to pour it. Mm, see, the pouring thing, that's not my thing, guys. I don't know. I'd rather just suck it up. I guess because when she does it, she mixes it in a way that as you're going like this and like that, it'll just pour. Okay, that's a little cooler for a background, I guess. Well, if I'm going to add brush strokes, I guess that's probably not what we want to do. Okay. This is the first time I play with these. They're kind of interesting. I don't know that I'm even doing it right, but <laughs> whatever. I'm just going to try to mix this in a little more so that there's no white spaces on here. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay. So it's a little artsy. It's a little something. A little different. So some on here so I can come in and kind of just try to scoop that up. Basically, you're just making like a background for yourself with this technique. You can also stamp with them, so maybe I'll show you to do that. Hope you guys are okay here spending some time with me just kind of doing silly stuff. Okay, what I'm going to do is grab some darker colors from the other set and then some stamps and we'll stamp on this. Okay, I'll back up just a little bit just so you can kind of see the setup I have here. So this is drying. It's drying pretty quickly too. So I'm still going to stamp on it just because I don't care even though it's not dry yet. This is just like a little starburst that I just found in a stamp set. There's a couple of them. I was thinking I should just stamp them all together at the same time but that looks kind of silly. So let's go with this one and then I'll use the other one too. There's going to be a lot of shooting stars in the skies guys. And this one has black and it has like a blue. Let's go with blue. Okay, well, there's a couple of ways we can do this. So I'm going to take this right to the stamp and just, well, we're just to wipe away that white stuff, huh? See if I can do that real quick. Yeah, it's on there pretty crusty. I'm just rubbing it on here. Mommy. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it stamps just like that. Hold on. Eh, that's not the best. So, yeah. Hi. I'm going to put this on here with a little bit. Hold on, Mama. With a little bit of water. And see what that looks like. Yeah, little one. I guess the star should be going downwards anyway. That's a little bit better. Not the best still, but what you can also do is just put it on here, wet that, and pick it up like this. And that's not even that much better, but you could imagine if this paper wasn't wet, um, you can get a pretty good stamp going. Yeah, it's just a little more ethereal kind of 
feel to it. I'm going to add a little more color. Try to get that a little more concentrated. Yeah, that's okay. So I'm going to switch off to the other little stamp and do a little more stamping and I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So I did use a little black and it came out a little brighter there, but that, you know, obviously this isn't the best composition. <laughs> I was just trying to test these things out. So, um, I do like the background thing. It's very Vicki Davenport, like all that kind of, is that her name? I don't know. Very similar. I definitely need bigger brushes for this, like to get that water, to get that wash feel, you know? So this little kind of round five is not going to do it. So that's my bad. But um, I, I don't know. I just don't know what you would use. Other than making backgrounds, I probably wouldn't use it for stamping or anything else, to be honest. So those are the art crayons. But that's just me. How do you use them? Let me know. I know a lot of people like playing with them, so that's cool. All right, so I have another piece of paper, and we're going to use the Recollections pens. And these are a little more gelato-ish, a little more like the Tim Holtz um, Distress crayons, which I do have. I was just thinking about I'm like, I, have, I think I have all the sets that he sells, too, because I remember... They're in there somewhere. I always have all my watercolor stuff, those kind of things together. So they're one of my tubs in the cartons of here. But what I do like about this is, is for watercolors, there is a lot. I like the packaging. I mean, if you wanted to put to mix on here, I guess you could. You have to be careful because these holes here. There's holes everywhere, actually, on the back, too, for whatever reason. Um, so you have to be careful. But with these, you can just blend them on the paper if you wanted. So let's say... Uh, we'll go with this teal and to the blues. It looks shimmery. I don't know if it is shimmery. Is this a shimmer set? Uh, no, it just is watercolor. Okay. So, super creamy. I love the feel already. Look at that. I didn't really use much of that little edge right there. You can blend them in with your finger. It still stays there, though. So that's, you know, a thing. But I'll show you something right now. And then let's go to the next blue that's next to that one. And then the darker blue. And I'm just sticking with the blues because what I want to show you guys is the blendability. And also if you just wet your finger a little bit. Look how those two kind of started blending already. Now, what I've seen with Tim Holtz is like if you even have just a baby wipe and just wet your finger with a baby wipe, it's enough to get this constituted to start blending a little better. But I'm just dipping my finger in some water. And I'm starting with the lighter color going into the deeper. And look how it just started moving. So pretty. No brush. Just with my finger. Really pretty. Um, I <laughs> hesitate to bring this brush in because it's so small. Where are my wash brushes? I usually have a bunch of brushes right here in front of me. I think they're over there. But anyway. Um, you could really move that paint. Miranda just uh, woke up from her second nap and she's seeing the dresses I just got her from AliExpress. Okay. So hopefully you can kind of see that. These I do like quite a bit. Um, you can use them like regular watercolors if you wanted to just dab some down and then like really wet it like on this plastic or whatever and then use it, you know, from there. You can definitely do that. Um, I'll show you right now just because I do need a little more of this. So let's say I just wanted to use this stuff. And you can just put it down a little bit and just get it nice and wet and add that to your whatever it is that you're doing. I'm just trying to get more color on this paper. Okay, so, you know, um, I'm assuming maybe you can stamp with them too. They're very gelato-y, very kind of cool like that if you want. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. They're just fun. I do like these a lot. And maybe you don't see any difference from the other ones. I don't know. To me, it, they are pretty different. But And they do have sparkle, even though it doesn't say that <laughs> on the packaging. So uh, if you're interested in that, they have much sparkle. They must have another set, I'm assuming, that doesn't have sparkle. But it doesn't say that they have sparkle. So anyway. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. You know, if that helped or not, or at least give you a little idea of what some of these projects do maybe you want to get into them but um i might even cut out the little guy put him on here i don't know we'll see all right <laughs> i'll have some pictures for you and i'll see you guys in the next one bye now